If my heart has grown cold, there you'll never learn from. As you open my eyes to the work, is Yeah. 
ways I have begun to understand spirituality is to recognize and to live in such a way that the divine would smile at us. Therefore, with joy, let us join Tom and John Ari in celebrating this jubilee. May God bless them and bless us who join them for this celebration. Thank you. God who is integrally and intimately connected with each one of us and with the whole universe is present here with us as God Emmanuel. So with thanksgiving in our hearts for the many ways in which God has blessed us, all of us begin this Mass in God's name, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. Amen. Eucharist is a mystery, spiritual, sacramental, real. God present with us. There are many ways in which we have fallen short. At the beginning of this Mass, we ask the Lord to heal us, to pardon us, to forgive us. Make our confession together. I confess to the Lord, my God, and to you, my brothers. I'm not afraid. 
Blessed are those who saw you and those who have been adorned in love, for we also shall surely live. The word of the Lord.
So I repeated that I don't take any medicine. Then how do you do it? I said water and walking. That has sustained me for quite some years. And into the 80s and 90s, I have made this pledge or all that happens in my life and in the life of the world, part of the mystery of life and the mystery of God, a mystery that I do not understand but I accept because it comes from God who is love. So I have three magic words. So I have learned to let go. What I did, which I cannot do now, I, am. I let go. It works wonders. Third word, now. Not the past. Although sometimes I like to say that the best years are ahead of me. The now, live in the now, not in the past or in the future, possible future. And then both of them then let go and now have sustained me. And so I thank God for the gift of life given to me. the way I was able to respond to life and the demands. Now we have a video on top that is prepared by one of the old boys. It just turned this Good evening. As we celebrate the magnificent milestones in the lives of Father yeah. Lincoln and Father John Ari, our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy. On behalf of the entire school community, we extend our heartiest congratulations to them. We have a little surprise for Father Kulinkar and for all present here. Under the ages of our principal, Father Joe Steejee, Mr. K.G. Devasya and Mr. K.G. Devasya, Ashish Chavla of the 1992 batch, now a professional photographer, has captured Father's phenomenal journey in the background of our resplendent school campus. The narration by Mrs. Mona Ray traces the milestones in Father's life and highlights the nuances of his ideology and philosophy, which has deeply influenced and enriched the lives of all who have ever been associated with him. So let's together have a glimpse of this beautiful journey of our visionary trailblazer, Father Kudu. Father Tom returns to India after his life studies in the 
request and took over the management of the principal of the school. In the early decades, Xavier's was a very selective school. The selection process was very tough and not anyone could walk into the school. Since most of the students were part of the school voting, they had plenty of time to be involved in various extracurricular activities. Father Tom, being an athlete himself, decided to give more focus on sports and games because he believed that those who get involved in sports while in school get a distinct advantage when they deal with life's problems in later years. Looking back, Father Tom believes that his best contribution to Xavier's has been developing a well-knit and highly motivated and enthusiastic teaching community who are passionately dedicated to the holistic upbringing of the students in their care. Before being affiliated to the CDSE, the school followed the Cambridge curriculum, which was very challenging. Most daily schools in those days were academic oriented. Father Tom thought differently. Along with academics, he began to give importance to life skills and soft skills. Like the ability to do critical and creative thinking, problem solving ability, interpersonal skills, ability to communicate, self confidence, ability to handle stress and tension. He believed that mere book answers and even high marks would not carry anyone very far into life. As an educator, he encouraged the students not only to answer the questions, but also to question the answers and even question the questions. Developing the kind of competencies and attitudes to deal with the fast changing patterns of life is the real challenge in education. As an educational philosopher, it was his aim to ignite a fire in the belly of every student that will ignite other fires. In other words, he thought that education should be an effective agent for the transformation of the self and through that transform self contribute to a societal transformation. The school also had an excellent boxing team in those days and father has a vivid recollection of how some of our young civilians literally growing up through their boxing ring experience. As alone, they stood in the ring to fight and win. It was his lesson to everyone. He does not give up till the last ball is bowled or till the final whistle is blown. As the longest serving principal of our school, he followed the difficult goal of making everyone a winner. Most schools, even today, drop out students who they are not confident to clear the board examination so that they will boast of 100% results. But Father Tom thought differently. He would allow every student to appear for the board examination and took it as a challenge to ensure that they clear the exams. Even when some failed to do so, he was not worried because for him, it was a sign of right policy. He was also confident that after having gone through the education in Xavier's, no student would at least fail in life. He thought that making butter out of butter didn't deserve much appreciation. As principal, he never encouraged competition where only one emerges the final winner. He discouraged dog-eat-dog -dog type competition which is not only immoral, but also harmful to the world. As principal, Father Tom laid foundation for the right kind of academic award system, which is followed in Xavier's even today. We don't follow top academic awards when the top three students are recognized, but he followed a system where a good number of students meet the standard, which is not very easy, and are given merit certificate. In this way, several students got such certificates. According to him, expanding appreciation and giving credit is the best way to develop the potential of every student. In those early years, it was necessary to set up systems, to establish high standards, and to maintain a passionate discipline in order to provide quality assurance to the school. Other than being an eminent educationist, 
Father John has remained steadfast as the champion of the marginalized and the underprivileged. Shedding its elitist image, he opened the gates of the Xavier's for the voiceless and the powerless towards the latter part of his principalship. Spearheading Mrs. Indira Gandhi's slogan, Reading a Tao on the campus, he ignited the young civilians to grow up as compassionate and socially responsible citizens. The government of India recognized the true potential of Father Tom and invited him to take up the chairmanship of the CBSE from 1980 to 1987. He also served as a member of several national commissions like National Commission for Teachers 1983 and National Commission for Review of National Education Policy 1987. He was appointed consultant to the Ministry of Human Resource Development to design and prepare a term team project to set up the National Open School from 1987 to 89 and was appointed chairman of NOS from 1989 to 92. As its founding chairman, Father Tom reframed most views of the former system to meet the needs of the learners of open schooling, most of whom are adults who lost their first chance and dropped out. NOS gave them a second chance for education and threw it for life. While keeping the academic standards of the course, open schooling provides a lot of flexibility. Father Tom Sunakul was given the National Award of Padma Shri in 1974 by the President of India and in 2006 he was given Honorary Fellow of the Commonwealth of Learning in Vancouver, Canada. Presently, he is an educational consultant, writer and animator. As an educationist, Father Kunakul was a man of great vision who not only mentored the school during its infancy and childhood days, but also initiated progressive changes in it. The future of every individual depends on the kind of guidance you receive as a child and teenager. In the same way, St. Xavier's goes to Father Kunankal for the upbringing he gave to it during the early days of its existence. guaranteed under special provisions of the Constitution. Father Kunakal was extremely affable, but there was a certain degree of awe about him. He inspired all. I was admitted to the St. Xavier School on merit, and thereafter I used to see him leading us in prayer every morning. He was disciplined, calm, completely unflappable, and always was able to bring the best out of students, but more importantly, had a perspective which was unselfish, tall, ideal, 
and he lived his life that way all the time. He did become a distinguished principal of the St. Xavier's High School, but apart from that, he later became a chairman of the Central Board of Secondary Education and brought in substantial reforms in our educational system. But deep down, he was an eclectic Christian, a man of faith, wisdom, compassion. In him, we have found the best that the Society of Jesus stands for. Father Kronkel, very warm greetings from Cold Mission in Kerala, where I am today. I greet you on this very special occasion of 75 years with Jesuit Society. Your compassion, your wisdom, your knowledge base, and a practical approach when you connect with so many of us has helped build strong individual positive attributes within us. They have strengthened the foundation which has helped us to carry on through life with an approach which is both positive and constructive, with an ability to find joy in being connected with others and an ability to recognize goodness and perhaps even nurture it in some way if it is possible. And that we have gained from your practical experiences and interactions with us. I feel grateful, I feel joyous for celebrating this special occasion and I wish you all the best for the years to come and may many more of us continue to benefit from you. Thank you again, Father Kanunkal. Father Thomas Kanunkal was an able educationist and administrator who within a short time of taking over as principal in 1962, raised the school to very high standards of performance in multiple spheres and made it a top school of Delhi. I would not be wrong in saying that Father Kanunkal is the rock on which the edifice of efficiency, trust and values as epitomized by St. Xavier School Delhi has been built. The earlier generations of Xavierians like me, who were fortunate to have been guided by him in his role as principal, will remain ever grateful for his guidance and blessing. We pray that Father Tom Kununkal continues to be healthy and happy so that our alma mater can continue to thrive and be blessed by his enduring presence. God bless Father Thomas Kununkal. God bless St. Xavier School Delhi so that it continues to churn out excellent students as envisioned by Father Kununkal and contributes effectively as an abiding mark of trust and positivity in our country and society. Jai Hind. I spent very memorable years of my life in St. Xavier School Delhi from 1962 to 1970, that is from class 4 to class 11. And all throughout my stay in school, Father Kuninkal was our principal. I was always mesmerized by Father Kuninkal's towering personality. He had this unique ability to command respect from the teachers and students alike without being authoritarian. He was immaculate whenever he spoke and he did not mince his words. With his leadership qualities, dedication, commitment and motivation, he took the school to new heights even though the school was in regency at that time. He also had an immense impact on my overall development and personality. I can proudly say that we were extremely fortunate, we were extremely lucky to have Father Kurintal as a principal. In fact, he is the best principal one could ever have. And it's still a joy to be here.
this evening i am very fortunate to celebrate my golden jubilee with father tom kunnagal who is celebrating his platinum jubilee it indeed is a great honor thank you father tom for this opportunity jubilee essentially according to leviticus the time of thanksgiving also it is a time of course correction to return to the normal it's basically related to land property and property rights the slaves and prisoners be released and those liberty for one and all 50 years of my jesuit life in 15 days i will complete in 50 years 27 december a very happy moment to recall the past 50 years at every stage of formation i was happy i have enjoyed profited and have gained a lot the home formation just to say a few words the parents the god loving parents and the family members shaped me in my childhood days glory to the brothers sisters other family members the knock at parish activities and environment enabled me to be what i am today the schooling primary upper primary high school all those who helped me and the fathers and the sisters who were in touch with me at various stages after having entered the society of jesus on 27th 1970 the formation period we were the first batch of pre novices in patna province under the leadership of father dura and silvester we profited a lot six months free time lots of activities lots of enjoyment then the novitiate you rate private ia philosophy private ba regency masters in pune university and then emerged in the stage every stage of my formation program i thoroughly enjoyed and theology block the first batch of rtc patna we of us we are referred to as the wandering theology students because we shifted around 10 to 12 places during that one year program and it was really a shift in the approach in theological studies and with lots of for hands on experiences I thank all those who helped me with the formation period so to Jesus. Coming back to the ministries, varied ministries, mainly I was for the education apostate. Started in 1974 in a Biryarpur mission, Patna, and later in 1989, 79 in Barbiga, was the headmaster of the school. As the was marked here, I spent twelve long years as the headmaster, as the vice principal, and as the principal. I was fortunate to follow in his footsteps. At the Shahbad Alipur School and Bivadi School, education. Then pastoral, I was the parish priest in Shahbad Alipur, also parish priest in Bivadi. to care of the judge mass center as well third one social work in every school i had been as a tradition is we have given stress to the social dimension of education to a great extent we also worked in roper and bivadi finally also i did some work in administration to all those who with whom i worked thanks thanks especially for this occasion to father jos philip and dj jos and brother john and serious people for having arranged this 
great opportunity. Also, thank Father Susai for being present with us in, to participate in our happiness. All, all of you who are present and all those who have prepared for this, I thank. And all those who are following the proceedings online from different places too, I thank the technicians, the choir, the others. Thanks to one and all. May God bless us all. Let us bring before the Lord our prayers. An empty lamp. The empty lamp is a symbol of service. The support of the empty lamp is very much necessary to hold the oil together. But most of the time, we tend to forget the empty lamp and admire only the light the lamp gives. We offer this lamp as a symbol of the sacrifices made by Fathers Thomas Kunankal and Father John Aripalli for the betterment of the society. We pray that the Lord may grant them good health and fulfillment in their life of service and commitment. The oil. The oil is a symbol of many qualities of Father Tom and Father John. Oil brings life and vitality to the lamp. It is the source of the way, very being of the lamp. So to Father Tom and Father John leave behind an indelible mark in the heart and minds of everyone who come in contact with them. Today we pray that they may live these qualities in their life and bring many more people to God. The Cotton Wick The love for the society which Father Tom and Father John express in their life is shown in the cotton wick. Society has formed them with a number of values, convictions, principles, skills and talents. That's why they can face today's challenging world. Let us pray that they may utilize all their talents and gifts generously in the future too. The lighted lamp. This symbolizes the life of Father Tom and Father John. They have not just received love but have passed it on to others, especially to us. They have been like a lamp kept on a lampstand, shedding light to all. As Father Tom and Father John complete a phase and turn a new leaf, we pray that they may be beacon to others in their life. bread and wine. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. These words have deep significance in our lives. We remember these words of Jesus Christ at every Eucharist. We pray that as we partake in this fellowship meal with Jesus, we may become Eucharistic persons spreading the message of faith, hope and love to one another and all people.
recognize and accept the fact that life is a great challenge, a great mystery, a great miracle. And therefore we need the grace from others, from God in our journey through life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. salvation. 
Now we watch for the day, hoping that the salvation promised us will be ours, and Christ our Lord will come again in His glory. So with all the choirs of angels in heaven, he to proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Jesus Christ, 
before he was given up to death. In death he freely accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, come by your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis of Hope, Adeta Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who are born to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed to the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will in all the ages. May we praise you, the evening wisdom, and give you glory to your Son, Jesus Christ. We sing this praise to the Father through the Son and the Spirit. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father,
peace in our day. In your mercy keep us free from sin. Protect us from all our anxieties and our worries, our cares, our fears, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory and us, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and hope of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And your spirit. Share that peace with one another.
May He, His coming, bring you the light of His holiness and His blessing bring you freedom. Amen. Amen. May God make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and untiring in love all the days of your life. Amen. You rejoice that our Redeemer came to live with us as a man. When He comes again in glory, may He reward you with endless life. Amen. We ask the Lord to bless us. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord and His people. Thanks be to God.
service comes to an end, I would like to express profound thanks to all those who made this possible. First of all, a very, very special thanks to Father Susie Mani, our provincial, to Father Rector Joseph Philip, to our minister, Brother John. Thanks to Mr. Ashish Chawla and Mr. Devasia for the video that we saw. Thanks to the choir led by Mr. Miranda, Mr. Subin Joy, and all the other teachers. There was so much of heart and josh in singing. Thanks to Mrs. Preeti Madan for the very attractive decorations she has done. Thanks to Sister Kiran, SMI, and team for the all the decorations. Thanks to the video and photograph by Mr. Ronnie and team. Thanks to Mr. Rose, Joe's Victoria, Sumit, Babu Ram, Rajinder, Bharati, and all those who helped. Thanks to Mr. Ajay and his team who have prepared for us the food. Finally, express thanks to all those who have come for this celebration from VJ, from ISI, from Jorba, and from Shahabad. Thanks, thanks to all of you. Situation here for the Jubilarians, congratulations. And uh, soon after the felicitation uh, here, we we'll proceed to the Heritage Hall for uh, the feast day dinner. <laughs>